the dissolving process. So dissolving ionic compounds is where you have um, this polar molecule of water. So we have here, and again, you have your oxygen and your hydrogens and your partial negative charge, that's a lowercase delta, and your partial positive charge on both of your hydrogens. And so you have this polarity of your water molecule. Um, so knowing that, we know that water has these charges to it. It is polar and ionic compounds also have charges to them. So they're gonna be attracted to each other. Um, if the ions are more attracted to the water molecules, the crystal that makes up the ionic compound will break apart and it will dissolve. When this happens, and you can see this in this GIF here, we've got these um, ions that are surrounded by waters. This is referred to as hydrating the ions, surrounding the ions with water. When this happens, the whole process overall, it dissociates the crystal. It takes the, the crystal lattice structure and it breaks it apart into individual ions. So this is called dissociation. We can write a dissociation equation. And so when an ionic compound breaks apart, it, it starts out as this solid crystal and it then becomes these ions here. We wanna make sure that the ratio is maintained. And other than that, all, all we've done here is really taken the, the solid crystal. So what we're showing in that, that picture there, um, we've, we've break, broken up the ions. And so for every one sodium ion, we're gonna now have a free sodium ion that is hydrated, it is aqueous, it's surrounded by water. And we have a chloride ion that is also hydrated. Um, it is also surrounded by water. So this is the dissociation equation for um, this, the dissolving of sodium chloride. Now realize this is not um, a chemical reaction, though it does look like one the way we wrote it. So we're writing in the same way. Think of this as a change. It's not a chemical change, but we're using it, um, this arrow and the plus sign. So the same sort of nomenclatures, the same sort of writing that we do for chemical reactions, we can apply that to dissolving as well. If you have more than one ion um, in the ratio here, so here we have a one to two ratio of magnesium to nitrates. When they dissolve, you're gonna get that one to two ratio being maintained. And do note that the polyatomic ions, they do not break up when they're being dissolved. The polyatomic ions stay together, but the cations, the two plus here and the one negative here for the nitrate, they are going to separate um, and we do need to make sure we maintain the same ratio. This equation here, not a chemical equation, but this equation here still has to balance. Molecular compounds, when they dissolve, um, if they dissolve, they are not going to break apart. The actual molecules stay together. So again, water's polar. Some molecules are polar. Those that are, if they're more attracted to the water, they'll dissolve into the water. Things that are small and polar, they tend to dissolve quite easily. Things that are large and not polar don't dissolve that well. Um, so sugar is quite polar. So here's a picture of a sugar molecule getting surrounded by water. So it's being hydrated by the water. Um, and then it is going to dissolve into water. The crystal gets broken up here. Now the individual molecules do not get broken up if it is a molecular compound. Molecular compounds do not get broken up when they dissolve. Um, if it is a molecular liquid, um, what we'd be looking at is uh, the terminology for it dissolving really well. We have a word called miscible for it to, to say that it dissolves really well. Um, when you have liquids that don't mix very well, we say immiscible. So oil and water would be immiscible. Um, alcohol and water would be miscible. Molecules don't really have a dissociation equation. There's no, they don't break up. So there's really no reason to write these dissociation equations. So if you had a, a um, molecule of glucose and it was solid, and you put it into water, you'd still have a molecule of glucose. It would just be surrounded by water. The molecules do not get broken up. Dissolving is a physical change. It does is not a chemical change. You do not end up with new particles. And you see that with the molecular substance. If you have these molecules here, when they're dissolved, they are still these molecules. Nothing has changed about them. They're just separated from each other, not apart from themselves. They have not broken up. They have just moved away from their friends and they're now surrounded by water. Um, with your ionic crystal, the same things happened. And it, it kind of looks like you're getting this new substance because it looks quite different. But remember, they had charges. So when we write the dissociation equation, like for sodium chloride dissociating. So it has a solid becoming aqueous ions of those uh, sodium and chloride ions. Um, this is what is being depicted here. It looks like there's a big change, but remember the way we write ionic compounds, 
neglects the fact that they have their charges. They do have their charges when they're ionic compounds. All we're doing when we write the association equation is that we are saying that they are surrounded by water. The same thing that we see happening with the molecules is happening with the ionic compounds. Neither one of them is a chemical reaction. Both dissolving of ionics and dissolving of molecules is a physical change. Like dissolves like is the phrase that we use to talk about um, how things are going to dissolve. So solutes dissolve in solvents. Remember the solute is the part you're putting in, the smaller amount. Um, the solvent is the stuff that um, is, is doing the dissolving. Um, so solutes dissolve in solvents of similar polarity. So like dissolves like. Polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents. Nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. So if we had a beaker that had a nonpolar solute here, and so this is what's going on at the top here, um, this right here is a nonpolar solute, and we have a polar solvent, and you see that they do not mix because they are not like each other. And in this other beaker here, we have a nonpolar solvent, it's the larger portion of it, so like oil, and we have a polar solute at the bottom here, and again, they do not mix. So the question would be, what happens if you put these two beakers together? And of course, like will dissolve like. So this nonpolar solute and this nonpolar solvent happily mix together. They are like each other, so they will dissolve. And then this polar solute and this polar solvent, they will end up together mixing um, because again, they are both polar, and so therefore they will dissolve. Nonpolar solute mixes with the nonpolar solvent. The polar solute mixes with the polar solvent. Like dissolves like. Surfacants are amphiphallic, and so essentially what this means is it's not as simple as saying this molecule is polar, this molecule is nonpolar. There are some molecules that are both polar and nonpolar. If you have a big enough molecule, you can have a portion that's polar, a portion that is nonpolar. And so these can act as surfacants. And then the fact that they're both polar and nonpolar, um, and different parts of them at the same time, mean they're amphipathic. They are able to dissolve in two different types of substances. So if you had these things in water, they're polar part, oh, wrong side, their polar part um, is going to be attracted to the water. Their non-polar part would be attracted or dissolve easily in the oil. And remember, it's not that it's not that the polar part is not attracted to the non-polar part, it's just more attracted to things that are like it. And so the polar part would be more attracted to the water. These molecules aren't, aren't repelled by other molecules, they're just more attracted to certain ones. And so with these ones, this is, this is essentially how soap and detergents work. They have an end that is going to mix with non-polar things like oil and then they have an end that is going to mix with polar things like water and so if you have some oil on your hand you can use soap and it'll grab onto the oil and then you put your hands in the water and it, those molecules also grab onto the water and take that oil away leaving your hands clean.